I realized I was eating the microphone there, so I'm going to just step back just a little bit. Uh, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about a new toy I've been kind of playing with uh, called Nomad Sculpt. Nomad Sculpt is a sculpting application for both iOS and Android and is by far the closest thing I think I've ever found to simulating a ZBrush experience on a tablet. This is something I'm incredibly excited about and I'm really eager to talk to you about some of my early tests with it. Now I've only been using the program for about say three days now and already I am just blown away by how not only easy to use it is but how much fun I'm having with it. I feel unblocked, uh, untethered. Uh, there's just something about sculpting with this program that makes me feel like I'm having a lot of fun using a program like ZBrush over and over and over again. You know, when you go back to that UI and you go back to that interface, it it's a little difficult to kind of get yourself excited by the same program that's kind of like looked the same this entire time. It's kind of like going back to Photoshop over and over again. It's very familiar. Um, but something about this program being so new and being so fresh, at least I'm finding my, myself, is just, I'm just very excited and I'm, and I'm very eager to try new things with this program. So uh, what is it? Well, like I said, you know, Nomad Sculpt, it simulates uh, a 3D sculpting experience. It doesn't simulate, it is a 3D sculpting experience, but it has a lot more than just that. Um, apart from being a sculpting application for Android and iOS that has, you know, incredibly great feeling brushes, awesome stability, uh, and, and really high performance, uh, Nomad Sculpt also offers a plethora of other options such as layers, uh, the ability like 3D Coat to paint base color and roughness and metalness. Um, and, and, and the ability to export out these models with all of that data sort of stored in the vertex uh, information. And then you can bring that into programs like ZBrush or programs like Blender. Uh, and Blender, by the way, is one of the programs, I think Maya as well, that can support that full range of base color roughness metalness. So you can actually bake out those maps and turn them into textures, sort of like you can do in 3D Code. Um, so it, it sort of is, is the the very early days of this program remind me actually a lot of sort of 3D coat in terms of its sculpting experience and its presentation, which is not a bad thing at all. The brushes um, feel, though, a lot like ZBrush, and that is sort of why I'm so excited by this program. Okay, so let's talk about my first couple of days with the program. I've been using this program for about three days now. Um, and I wanted to sort of do a test for myself to sort of see how usable this program was. So in the first two days, what I ended up doing was just like learning the program. And on the third day, I basically took it outside, got myself comfortable, situated, had some lunch. And over lunch in the outdoors, sort of like every artist's fantasy, I wanted to create uh, a sketch freely as I would in ZBrush. So from my mind to the canvas, from a sphere, how far can I go? The results are pretty awesome. Uh, within a couple, within like an hour or two, uh, I was really able to quickly block in a lot of forms. I was able to use the uh, stability and the raw power of this program uh, to my advantage and crank out a high polygonal count character. It's a minotaur ring in its nose, which is a separate object. The horns are a separate object. It's able to sculpt them pretty quickly and intuitively. Uh, the the revoxelization that they have in there, very similar to Dynamesh in ZBrush. If you're used to that workflow, you're going to be fine. Uh, they have a subdivision workflow, which I also use. They even have a dynamic uh, topology mode uh, similar to, to Sculpturous. And so using sort of a mixture of these three, I was able to create something uh, that in, in many ways reminds me of what I did in ZBrush a lot of times. And so the, the sketch that I ended up with, very similar to what I'm able to achieve in ZBrush. ZBrush obviously has a lot of features and tools and can go way higher in poly count and things like that. It's a professional tool. But as far as like sketching goes and getting something that is like really pretty and really sort of presentable, it did the trick. 
something it doesn't really have yet are like really good rendering tools. So as you see from the images, these are just basically captures from the program. Once I exported the OBJ out of the program, I put it directly into Keyshot. There's no ZBrush magic here. Uh, I threw it directly into Keyshot through the materials on the model that I would normally do on a normal ZBrush sculpt rendered it out and and these are the results you're seeing on the screen and frankly i am so impressed mainly because this was only a couple hours and this thing came off of a, an android tablet you know this is a tablet um and i you know we're, we're we're there now we're in this sort of reality it's it's don't get me wrong this is not a production quality tool yet this isn't the level of procreate or clip studio this is still a new program and yes though very mature it still has a long way to go for me to recommend this as a like pro tool however this is as pro a tool in the form of 3d sculpting that i think i frankly ever used that is on a tablet right now yes there are other programs a lot of them are like for apple and ios um what I can say is I wholeheartedly recommend this program to use. And I feel like the track that it's on, the roadmap that it's on, uh, has the highest level of potential of getting to a point that is comparable to other desktop-grade 3D sculpting applications. Especially if you're on Android. There are no alternatives that are really worth a damn on Android right now in terms of 3D sculpting. So if you're like me and you're an Android user stop this video and download this program. There is really nothing else like it. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys, on top of all the other examples that I showed you, like my earlier tests, you know, what this thing can do sort of in real time. This won't be in real time, I've sped up the footage, but this is a screen recording of me sculpting for about 40 minutes from a sphere, this kind of ghoulish skull, very stylized uh, sculpt, you know, character from my head, just threw it down on the canvas, um, and this is sort of the kind of process you can expect if you're very much used to a ZBrush-like workflow. Um, even through this set of footage, you'll see I'm remeshing things, I'm subdividing things, I'm using a variety of different brushes, uh, clay and flatten and pinch and crease, just like you would in ZBrush, um, move tools and that sort of thing, and I'm getting a really kind of cool result. Now the result obviously I'm showing now, uh, it's very simple. This was not meant to be like this amazing portfolio piece, but what this is designed to do is just show you sort of a very realistic use case of what this program can achieve.
finally here They see their breath glisten in clouds in the air Evaporates faster the longer they stare Another damn year The snow crunches softly like glass underfoot The time since they knocked makes it hard to stay put I know you won't see to fear A rustle of curtain They stare eye to eye The grey of his iris The snow-tinted sky I know you won't see Okay, so after you've seen that video now, um, you've seen sort of like what this thing can do. Um, the next step, obviously, is to sort of show you guys, even if you don't have the program, what this model could look like. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've decimated the Minotaur model that I showed you at the very beginning of the model. Yes, I did use ZBrush to do so. And I've uploaded it to Sketchfab. And I've set up a cool little scene for you guys to kind of tumble around with. But on top of that, I've also made the model free for download. Now, another thing with that, I've also included this model in Thingiverse, and I've put it up on my Thingiverse. Now, this is a much higher decimated model, uh, but it's solid one piece, and it's fully watertight. Uh, I'm going to 3D print this in a little bit, but I'm also going to give this thing out to you guys so you guys can 3D print it and, you know, see how this quality can be. That is something that I'm sort of curious about, even though it isn't quite there yet in terms of like making a game ready character. Something that it is sort of right now really good at is making a 3D printable character and making a toy because it's great at making these watertight voxel meshes that have a lot of detail in them. 3D print it, do whatever you want with it. Um, have fun with it, you know, test it out, see if what this model is and what this can do. Again, this is a new program. It's called Nomad Sculpt. Highly recommend it. I am super excited. I don't think I've actually been as excited for a new tool in quite some time. My camera literally just died, so this is why this now looks a little different. This program is very cool. I'm very excited about it. I want to see more people using it because the more people that are using it, the more feedback that's going to be generated, the more feedback's going to be generated, the better the program's going to be. Uh, it's a very, very small program right now, but like 
already it's so mature and I would love to see this thing sort of explode and become a really viable 3D alternative on tablets, much like Procreate and Clip Studio are that for mobile for 2D artists. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I will have more videos soon, including a full tutorial on the S7 Plus uh, that I used to sculpt the video that you saw on Nomad as well uh, as the Minotaur head before. So thank you guys. I appreciate your time, and I will see you in the next one.